content. Content, content, content. This definitely wasn't a word heard in daily, weekly, or even monthly life a decade ago. But now it's very much my bread and butter. It's definitely where I make most of my income. Not the music videos, not the occasional commercial work, and definitely not the series work that I haven't been a part of since 2019 now. But content for brands. Brands want to communicate their message via the medium of video. And I'm okay with that. It's not often particularly sexy, but it pays the bills. One such job of this nature was back in April of last year via my good friends at Prodigious, the in-house production company that sits under the enormous umbrella of the publicist group. And I thought it might be interesting for some to have a look at the process behind that job. I was initially contacted about six weeks prior to the shoot as they wanted to know my availabilities in order to put me forward with a bunch of other directors to pitch on the job. The budget was good, but not great. So they were looking for directors who were comfortable playing the role of DP as well. After an initial briefing on the phone and a standard, we'll be in touch, there was nothing. Silence. I very rarely chase up on a job at this early stage. If they want you, they'll let you know. But the silence can sometimes be frustrating, especially if you've got other potential jobs coming in that might clash with the dates. Several weeks later, I was informed that the brand and agency were really keen to go with a female director. So, sorry, but you're no longer in the running. Not the first, and definitely not the last time, I'll be discriminated against to lose out on a job, but at least the playing field's evening out. And someone's got to take the hit. But then a week later, I got a call. Luck was on my side. All four directors that had been put forward for the job were either not up to scratch in the eyes of the agency or unavailable. Lucky me. They were getting dangerously close now to the actual shoot date, so regardless of being somewhat well-equipped with male genitalia, I was back in the running, and this time I only had one other person I was up against. I was given the brief, which was already a very structured and guide-scripted piece by the creatives at the agency, including key messages that needed to be delivered and even working storyboards. I was asked to put together a short treatment with a few stylistic ideas on how we could approach things and make it feel more than just your run-of-the-mill corporate video, which is and was very hard to do whilst shooting in an operating factory that runs 24 hours a day, whilst sticking to their rules and having to abide by COVID protocol. As per usual in the content world, it had a load of different varied deliverables. So after an initial brief introduction of Guff, I was keen to show my consideration and understanding of the multiple deliverables up front, rather than treating other formats as an afterthought, which I think is quite often the case. My ideas included some point of view shots of the product's journey, as well as some playful on-brand stop motion titles and stylistic suggestions for the on-screen animations. When talking about the look, I knew it was going to be a relatively small crew, and I knew we were essentially filming an investigative doco-style piece. But I did my best to emphasise the positives we'd be looking to capture in this, and how the grade on the finished edits would help make the image feel. I talked about sound design, as well as making suggestions on how we would approach the interviews so they felt natural and unforced. Which isn't always necessarily that easy to do when you're trying to get regular everyday people to hit key points in a succinct way. Then, I only bloody well went and won the job, didn't I? Finally, given the thumbs up just two working days before we were due to be in Manchester on the recce. Production was going to source local crew to save on both travel and accommodation costs. So it was just one producer, a production assistant and myself travelling up from London. To save on the unnecessary cost of a driver, I volunteered to pick up the rental minivan type thing which we'd travel up in, along with a few bits of kit, props and PPE. That's personal protective equipment for people that don't work in Covid affected industries which is no one. It was so last minute confirming that my producer Elliot was even booking a rental kit on the journey up. Once we'd arrived in Manchester on the Tuesday evening, our time was split between a makeshift production base in Elliot's hotel room, where we were up too late each night working on scheduling and the PPM doc, another acronym, pre-production meeting if you weren't already in the know. This was ahead of our PPM on the Thursday, where we'd run through everything in meticulous detail with the clients and agency. We also visited location on two separate visits ahead of Friday. The first of those being a very thorough recce on the Wednesday, which included, as well as the team from London, the sound op, second unit DP and still photographer, as we had a lot to cover in a limited time. We also had a nurse on location to carry out PCR tests ahead of the shoot day. Shooting in a working factory placed a lot of limitations on the shoot. It was enormous and health and safety was a nightmare. We were in their space and naturally had to do things their way. Lights that would have ideally been turned off couldn't be turned off. Doors that need to be opened couldn't be opened. Limited numbers on the floor at any one time, so agency numbers would have to be limited. Every cloud. Everyone needed to be chaperoned to go anywhere or get anything. But there were very limited chaperones available to us. The machinery was so loud, and we were shooting interviews and working with a presenter. I knew what the job was when I signed up. It was never going to be sexy, but it seemed like everything was against us for this to be the worst it could possibly be. 
A lot of plans and setups then had to be changed as a result of what we learned, which is a perfect example of why we recce. The Thursday was then filled with a ton of Zoom meetings with creatives, talent and the PPM. Follow up questions to our contact at the factory and a pre-shoot day load in of kit by myself and the limited London team to save on setup time the following morning. I managed to get a jump start on building cameras and setting up lights. Then it was back in the hotel to finalise schedules and shot lists for both units and consequently end up not having enough time to get a good night's sleep before the actual shoot. I'm here at the Pampers factory in Manchester to see how Pampers make babies roll better by being local. Due to all the planning that we managed to cram in on the few days leading up to the shoot, it managed to run fairly smoothly, with the exception of the second unit first AC turning up in shorts, which was apparently a health and safety no-no for some reason that the rep from the factory had failed to mention on our recce day. The loud noises from all the machines was unavoidable, so with a few exceptions, we just ran with it, and I had the presenter talk at a level that acknowledged the loud atmosphere around her. The second unit went a bit rogue in the morning. They didn't seem particularly good at problem solving anything themselves, which made things tricky for me with the limited crew as I was camera operating as well as directing. And then on top of that, being asked a ton of additional questions over the comms via producer Elliot, who was with me on the main unit. Fortunately, being the great producer Elliot is, he fielded most of the responses himself, but it was still less than ideal, considering most of what we were being asked had been covered extensively in prep. One of the ideas that I pitched in the initial treatment to give a bit of character to the piece was stop motion title slides, rather than the slightly cheaper feeling, to my taste at least, graphics. Unfortunately, this one was a huge fail, partly due to the props we needed not actually existing, but mostly because after we'd run out of time with our 10 plus one hour day, and the local crew were already into overtime that I knew the budget couldn't really afford, I just couldn't be bothered to hang around until nine o'clock on a Friday night, after a few failed attempts being pretty sure that none of these would actually make the final cut. I refer you to my graph theory. Time by effort equals reward. And it normally goes something like this in the filmmaking world. Pick your battles. Fortunately, or unfortunately, depends which way you look at it, I wasn't involved in any of the post-production. Had this been a showreel worthy job, then it would probably have been unfortunately, and I would have no doubt offered my time regardless as part of the director's buyout. But fortunately, I guess, it wasn't a showreel worthy job. It was never going to be, and I think everyone already kind of knew that. There were a bunch of things not executed to the best they could have been in the post, but what can I do about it when it was split between in-house post-production stuff? Not a lot. Never mind. The only thing that really worries me about something not being the very best it could be is it's kind of my name on the tin, so to speak, as the director. It was my first time working with this particular agency, and I'm sure the only thing that they'll remember about the job after a few weeks is the finished product. So will I be on their mind next time a job of this nature comes up, or will they have forgotten about me due to the lack of wow from the finished product? Probably the latter, but this remains to be known, except for the fact that it's nearly been a year and I've had nothing else through, so definitely the latter. I wasn't privy to the production budget on this one, so I can't give you a full detailed breakdown but I can tell you that my director's fee was a five grand buyout. That's $6,750 approximately. I also managed to get some of my own kit on there too. Monitors, a couple of lights, my easy rig, and filters for an additional 600 pounds, approximately $800. So definitely not shit for a full on, but ultimately fun week's work, even if there was a lot of back and forth to actually win the job in the first place. And that's about all I've got for you on this one. If you enjoyed an insight into the process behind this production, then check out this playlist I made. It's full of the process behind a ton of other great projects. And if you still have not subscribed, make sure to f***ing do it for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge. <laughs>